Hi, this is Julie Lubinsky. I am web manager for the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, and I'd like to welcome you all to this month's live chat with Dr. Dan. And just to remind you all who Dr. Dan is, he's a practicing psychologist and therapist with more than 40 years' experience, and he's best known for the host as being the host of Voices in the Family. And he is so kind to join us every month for a live chat here. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful you all can join us, and I want to remind you that he is also in our community every Wednesday from 3 to 4 answering questions that all over the community. So you know, please feel free to join our community at ChristopherReeve.org slash community and leave him questions there. But today you are lucky to have him here with us live. So I'd like to say hi to Dr. Dan. Hey, Julie. How are you? I am doing well. I'm very cold. It's cold in Pennsylvania where I am, and we finally got our first snow. You got snow? We got some snow. Just a dusting, but we did get some snow. Well, so, uh, you know, you mentioned, Julie, that I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. I, w I just wanted to mention that next Wednesday at 3 o'clock, I will I will log in best I can from Austin, Texas. And the reason I'm going to Austin, Texas is because I am meeting with a woman named Kristen Neff. And Kristen, a psychologist, Kristen is known throughout the world for uh, self-compassion. She's the leading researcher and teacher in the field of self-compassion. So I'm having lunch with her. She's been on my show several times, but we've never met in person. So I'm looking forward to meeting her. And I, you know, I teach uh, mindfulness-based self-compassion down, down here in South Jersey. It really changes lives. And it changes people's lives when we can learn to be compassionate towards ourselves. You know, just simply compassionate like we would for any other human who may or may not be suffering at the moment. But when we can do that for ourselves, boy, it does change everything. So anyway, that's just a side note. And, um, you know, side note, well, we can get back to the topic, although everything is related to uh, self-compassion. So, Julie. Yes. What are, do you do New Year's resolutions? I don't, because <laughs> I feel like I never stick to them. <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, I resolved this year to work my butt off to live for another year. <laughs> and if I'm successful, I'm a happy boy. But, you know, to make these demands, on myself, you know, to be more organized or more whatever, pay my bills earlier. I mean, whatever the issues are, you know, to, to lose weight. Um, it's just pressure and it's demanding. And then, so what happens when you don't do it? Well, you know, then you feel bad about yourself. So, so it's a no-win thing. Uh, is that why you stopped? Yeah, they're pretty. I think my, you know, pretty much the same every year, and um, so I just keep it going. You know, I um, I don't have any major things. New Year's resolutions. Um, you know, if it's the same one, I always lose weight, but um, everybody has that. I'm sure. Um, but again, I do agree with you, you know, to make it through another year. And if I'm here another year, then let's improve from the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if anybody is on the phone, wants to join our conversation, or has any questions or comments. We've got a bunch of you that uh, that are listening in. 
Yes, I'm asking people if um, they have any questions to please use the chat box function if they are on the phone. All you have to do is hit star 1 and you will get patched through and you can ask your questions. I encourage you, you have him, Dr. Dan here live. If not, I will monopolize the time and you'll have to hear all my questions <laughs> and answers from Dan. So, <laughs> but um, some of the, some people are put, putting in some New Year's resolutions and um, one person's with me, no, I don't have any either. Um, you know, another one says overcome my disability. Another one prove to myself my disability doesn't stop me. So um, I, it's really interesting. Prove to myself that my disability doesn't stop me. I'd really love to hear more about that. It's um, it's interesting, Julie. I I had that especially early on after my accident. And I'm glad I did. I was I was stubborn to a point of almost almost self destructive. If I was sick, if I didn't feel well, if I was tired, I would just force myself to get out of bed and to go to work. Force myself. Um, because, you know, it's the same thing. Um, I wanted to prove that this disability was not going to ruin my life. And, you know, now that it is 35 plus years past that, um, my disability, I don't know if it stops me. It sure slows me down. But, you know, I, you know, I talked about, Julie, we talked about Kristen Neff and this business of self-compassion. And, you know, for the last decade, I've been feeling great compassion for this body of mine that has worked so hard, such great gratitude for it. And I'm battling another pretty severe urinary tract infection. And truly, I told you about this before before I went we went on. But you know, here I am with all these symptoms. You know, my my neuropathic pain's worse, the spasms worse, my stamina's down, all that stuff. But instead of resenting my body for slowing me down, I feel such great compassion and sadness for this body that's engaged in another war. And why? Just to keep me alive, to keep me healthy and thriving. You know, so, so I can get out of bed tomorrow and do what I want to do. So self-compassion has really changed my life. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting that uh, I don't know if the one that, that the person that wrote in uh, feels that way, or that's even what you were thinking when you when you wrote that. But I would love to hear more. You can, you know, either call in or uh, you know type type in the chat box. And if you do, please give us a little more detail about what Hello. you want. Pardon? Hello. 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 Who is, is this? This is Lynn Rauer. Hi, Lynn. Hi. I called you a couple months ago, and I was typing over the computer, and you asked to speak to me again, so I'm calling back. I'm the girl that the doctor gave me no imaging and hit my spinal cord. Do you remember? Uh, but yeah, yeah, not in great detail. I'm I, calling from Seattle. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. I um, I remember I, you were calling. It was about our um, it was about uh, we were talking about anger. Yes. Um, so how, how, how are you doing? How is that anger? 
Well, I'm doing all right. It's uh, It's been five and a half years, which is a long time, but I'm still, um, I'm still really sad what he did to me. Uh, I was um, very healthy. I was only 57 years old, and I had excruciating pain in my right knee, and he let me go on for two and a half years and never gave me any imaging in my back, even though he said that it was coming from my back. And he put in a spinal stimulator in my back and hit my spinal cord. And I will forever be crippled because of him. And I I used to be more mad, but now I'm just sad. I am on my feet but I walk so incredibly slow. I get so tired. I have terrible leg spasms, and and um, I have accidents in the bathroom department. And um, I just, I just am so sad that there was never an apology. He um, he actually said in his deposition that he that I should be grateful that he um, paralyzed me because it took away my pain. Hmm. And um, That's an interesting take. Yeah, yeah, a lot of nerve he has. Yeah, listen, then how long how long ago was that again? You just mentioned. Are you quite here? Five and a half years ago. So let me ask you something. What do you feel you need to to heal? I mean, I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about your heart. I need an apology. I need some kind of recognition that he has an ounce of sorrow about it. Not that I want him to feel, I don't want to burden his life with this, but I just didn't expect him to be such an asshole about it. Yeah. Um, When it came to um, the lawsuit, he just was so awful about it. And I... It's not like I want him to think about me or or oh. have any ill will, but I don't feel like he even cared. So listen, here's what happens. He, he may not care. It's more likely than not that he doesn't care. He's moved on. Uh, and I don't understand that. I don't understand... Well, it's not your it's not your job, and to understand that it's it's your job to find a way to live with who you are, what happened, more comfortably than you are right now. You see, one of the things that's troubling here, Lynn, is that he's not in a relationship with you. And you're still in a relationship with him. Exactly. I would, I would love to see you guys get untangled because, in a way, you wake up with him every morning. Well, I didn't mean it that way, you know. No, I know what you mean. Every time I try to take a step and I feel like my legs are going to give out, I am constantly reminded of the relationship. And I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, he's I'm just, just a very compassionate person, and I don't understand how somebody can be so uncaring. So, you know, Webster, the, the Webster's Dictionary, defines forgiveness as letting go of resentment. I know. 
but with the act. I mean, the, the act is horrible. His personality might be also. It's got nothing to do with the act. The act might be unforgivable. Who knows? But forgiveness means letting go of resentment. And I understand that. I know that I hold the key to letting myself out of this jail. I know that. And I have good days, and I have days that, that I mean, I walk around with a smile on my face all the time, and I'm a very uplifting person. It's just I have my bad days, too. When When people look at me funny or... I don't know. It's it's like I'm in a new culture that I never was part of before, and it's hard to assimilate into that culture for me. You mean you mean us? Our, yeah. Our, our culture. Our yeah, culture. I, yeah. Nobody's here voluntarily. Believe me. I know. But one it's of just, the th- one of the things. I think most of us have discovered is that, you know, we are human, we're compassionate and kind, and more important, we're all kindred spirits in this club. There's a way we understand each other at the deepest level. And I don't know, there's something about this club that enables that to happen that you don't get so easily on the outside. So, you know, we... Uh, I, have a hard, I have a hard time with friends feeling sorry for me and, and always saying, you know, well, I, I, I love the fact that they want to help me, but... I don't want to, I, I've always been a very independent person and I, I just don't want people to look at me like, oh, we have to feel so sorry for her. You know what, Lynn, um, one of the things that happens with time, when you can get out of this relationship, with with this surgeon. One of the things that happens over time is when you go out, um, you're less focused on your disability or how you walk. And you're more interested in what's happening outside of you and what's happening inside of you. I remember many, many years ago, I was in a hotel lobby and I felt so self-conscious, I wanted to hide. I wanted to go into a corner and I couldn't fit in one. I felt awful, so filled with shame. And then about 20 years later, I was in the lobby and I was enjoying myself, watching people come in and out, you know, telling myself stories about their lives. And I realized what was different now than then is that I wasn't lost inside myself. I was just enjoying the environment where I was at the moment. But it takes a while. You know, that doesn't happen automatically. But it it can't begin to happen until, you know, you, you end this relationship with that surgeon. And, you know, he's, he's not going to go away, so you're going to have to. You're going right. to have to leave him. Right. So, you know, I wish it was easier. I wish, I wish there were answers for you, but other than that, there are not. I, I hate to do this, but, you know, I, 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 perhaps some counseling could be helpful for you. And I, I just have a gut feeling you might have a a good therapist or two out there in Seattle. Yeah, I've been looking for one because I do believe that I have, I don't want to say PS, whatever that is, but there are, um, there's something unhealthy about having someone to blame and, and I want to, 
I want to let, I want to put that down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, it can be done. It can be done, and it can be done relatively easily. You know, it's, it's funny coincidence when I'm just putting together a, a course that I'm going to start teaching next month on forgiveness. And, you know, forgiveness first is seeking forgiveness for all those we have harmed based on what we knew at the time, based on our genetics, based on our environment, based on the way our brains were. We've hurt people, and we ask forgiveness. And then the second stage is we forgive ourselves for all we've done to harm ourselves, to harm our bodies, all the things we've done out of neglect or ignorance, we forgive ourselves. And then we forgive others, knowing that you know, their, their actions are the same as ours. Very few people intend to hurt others. And you know, it, it's a process, man, but it's a process. Mm -hmm. So I, I do wish you the best. And I appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've got Brian. Julie? I am here. Uh, we've I got Brian Presley, who just wrote, um, Pressy, sorry, I would like to have an epidural operation to walk and feel young again. What's the chance of me being a Canadian and having these? Oh, you, you responded. Yeah, I let him know to visit um, griefbigidea.org and send, make sure you send up for the registry. That's University of Louisville um, is keeping and we are raising, working very hard. The Reed Foundation is working very hard to raise the funds for um, an additional 36 people to get the epidural stimulation. And, and the reason, you know, we're doing this is so that um, it becomes in the mainstream as um, the therapy. Wow. That's great. Boy, you're a treasure trove of information. I'm going <laughs> to sit at your feet. Um, Ryan Mayer, uh, you can listen. What, what does he have to click star what to talk? Star one. Star one, Brian. Hello? There you go. Hi, Brian. Hi, Dr. Dan. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Thank I you. sure, uh, like uh, what you said earlier about, you know, working really hard this year, you know, and uh, I uh, I was injured in 2002, and it's amazing. I was a complete injury for three months, and uh, after three months, I started to get some return in my legs, and uh, I was told by the doctor that, you know, I, I could do stand pivot transfers and stuff. But, you know, the more than likely, that's about it. But uh, I, I, after I got to the point where I was actually walking with a platform walker, and I decided I had two people here, and I was going to walk without the platform walker. And I actually was walking, but I had my arms in front of me like I was still holding on to the platform walker. Wow. And, uh, it was about four or five years down the line, and uh, they told me I had plateaued, and I really kind of I let myself go, and uh, my mom was trying to help me, and I fell on my porch a couple times, and I just didn't want to put my mom through it. and uh, I resolved last year to be walking by the time I was 50, and I, I, I got two vans, and they both broke down, but I was taking a transport to downtown Charleston and going outpatient therapy, and I was doing great. I was 
using the pedal bike along with the electrodes on my legs, pedaling up to four miles, you know, for an hour and making strides. I was standing and uh, I was in my garage and I fell over on my legs and I was supposed to go into the house and my wife was waiting for me and she fell asleep and I laid in the garage trapped like that for like nine and a half hours. Oh, my God. uh, Yeah, and that was September 13th. And uh, she came out that morning, and I I said, just, uh, I went to the bed, and I I had rolled out of the chair. And I should have went to the hospital. When I woke up, I knew I needed to go to the hospital. And and I went to MUSC, and they, they had induced a coma, you know, for about a week. And I couldn't move my legs again. And I couldn't feel them or anything. And it was really daunting. And um, I finally got to where I could move my toes. And where where are you now? Now I'm at home, and I'm How's getting a lot of return. Uh, they wanted me to. I had outpatient, and uh, I was doing real good with them. But they don't last long. They cut you off real quick. But I'm luckily enough that I have turned my garage into my workout station. And Let me, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Are you enjoying working out? Yes, I do. Just the act of working out brings you pleasure. It does. It All sure right, does. Let me ask another question then. Yes, sir. In, in terms of happiness, and happiness at one and misery at the other, Where's your life? How would you rate your life these days? Uh, I'm not real happy. I, I could say I could be a lot happier. I haven't left my house except to go to a hospital in about two years. Oh, my God. Yeah. I got a van out there that I just put a bunch of money into, and now I got an electrical problem, but it's close. And I hate to ask for help. I think that's part of part of where my problem lies. And Dr. Dan, this is what I, my struggle with is. I struggle with paying my bills every month, and it seems like months go by, like years, and and they're just clicking by. And I'm I'm, I'm afraid that my I don't want my legacy, you know, to end, you know, when I got hurt, you know. You don't want your legs to end, you said. Look. I guess I meant a legacy, you know, right. like my wife's work. Uh, I was a very busy person. I I had my own business, you know. I made lots and lots of money, and and now I'm poor, and it's just so hard just getting by. Oh my God! Of course, especially the transition. So, um, you know, you talk about your legacy, right? Yes. What do you want people to say about you at your funeral? How do you want to be remembered? I just want to be remembered, you know, as a compassionate individual that tried hard just to help people. I mean, I I would love to be a therapist like you. I mean, I've been through a lot. I, I felt like I've lived many lives, but I've cheated death. What stops, what stops you from being a therapist? Just, uh, I don't know, myself. I, I guess hey. just, I don't know, I need help. That's kind of why I'm reaching out. Yeah, well, uh, what do you need help with, Brian? I got, I, I got a daughter and a grandchild, and my wife is, got mental issues and I don't have a caretaker right now and it seems like I just live you know day to day to have you know a bowel movement every other day and and uh, she likes to sleep and uh, you know I get up at six and I have to watch TV my daughter's just starting to try to help me more where 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 are you living I live in Charleston County in in South Carolina and I assume near the city. No, sir. I'm in the county. 
uh, it's in a rural area, and that's part of the problem. Yeah. It's, I'm 20 miles from Charleston, and this this house and property I live in is beautiful, but, it, you know, it's probably worth a half a million, but uh, I only owe 70000 but I'm thinking this year I need to get out from yeah. under it. I can't keep up with it. I have to rely on other people to cut my grass or... So here's, here's, boy, I wish I was a social worker. I'd be more knowledgeable about it. Yeah. First of all, I want our, um, Julie, uh, can we get our peer support people? Out? Yes, um, I just put um, in the chat box ah. um, to call our information specialists because they will give you resources um, um, where you live. Yeah. And they will also put you in touch with, um, we have a great peer and family support system, so they will um, get you involved with that yeah. as well. Because it seems like you have a lot to offer other people as well. You, you know, you were saying about you, yeah. you want to be a therapist. It seems like you're not afraid to talk, and I think, I think other people would like to listen as well. And I think you can work off of each other in a peer situation. I, I, would, I would love to have you as one of my colleagues, Brian. That's, that's uh, I don't even know what to say. I, 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 would, I would be honored, and well, I'd love to talk cases with you. All right. So, that, that, that's good. I, I need to reach out and talk to somebody because I don't talk to anybody. I'm, so, I'm a very private person, and I just I don't even like, well, here's the deal. Yeah. Here's one of the things I, I learned with this disability is that it takes real strength, real strength, to look someone in the eye and say three words, please help me. Yeah. Anybody can say I can do it on my own, whether right. they're lying or not. I Those three words take strength. It does. I think pride is the tool of the devil. Yeah, well, yeah. And, I, you know, when I was in a position, I helped people all the time. I mean, I got them out of situations, and I felt like, you know, that was my goal was, was to help people. And in my business, I was in commercial glass work, and uh, I feel like I could still get into it. But I don't know that, you know, I want to put myself back into that or not. I just, I'm kind of at a loss now. Yeah, you know what? Um, the dream would be to find something that feeds your soul and pays your bills. Yeah. But I'd love it to be both for you. Right. I do. I need, and I, I need, I mean, I, I have a church I haven't been able to go to in four years. I can't I can't say that I haven't been able to, but I don't have the resources to get there all the time that I need to. Have them come to you. And they have. They they came out and helped me for Christmas and Thanksgiving, but uh, Nah. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. No, I'm talking about real help. Yeah, yeah, it's great Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and getting Yeah, on. that just it's just not all year, you know. You need resources. You need a support system. You know, you need people who know what's going on about with you and your family and who actually care and want to do what they can to make it better. And you're gonna find that kind of person in a church. And I'll bet you find it in your church. Please reach out. Please reach out to your pastor or minister. Okay. All right. I'm planning on doing that, and I I want to thank you. Uh, it, there's, I mean, I don't know how to direct contact you except through. Uh, uh, well, you can uh, email. Me. Just Google me. My email address is going to be there. Okay. All right. All right, all right, I won't take anybody on your time. Thank you so much. Take care of you, Brian. It was good meeting you. All right, you also. Bye-bye.
Brian, thank you, and please follow up um, and getting involved with our peer program because I know we'd love to have you. Okay, I uh, got some support groups here. I just haven't been able to get anywhere. I'm hoping my van is going to get repaired, and it's got all the amenities even for me to drive. But you know, there's we right we now, do a we have problem. But our I, peer program is also remotely too, so you don't need to travel anywhere. But we can definitely help to get things started that's with good. that. You have I a lot to offer. I can hear it. Just, just me talking with y'all is getting things started for me. Good for you. All right. Good for you. All right, Brian. Take care of you. Okay. Bye-bye. So, Joy. Yes. So, I'm listening to you and the resources you have. And I just have to say, I love you. <laughs> I'm I'm coming to your house, and I'm going to be your student. <laughs> you <have laughs> this is the whole reason we have the Reef Foundation. It's the Reef Foundation. They have these wonderful um, web chats and our wonderful community and wonderful programs to um, help people, caretakers, you know, people living with disabilities, people living with paralysis, and their caretakers and their family. Um, and, and, and what I love about it is there's, we have live people. You call and you're going to get a live person to talk to. And that's not, you don't have that in every foundation. And uh, I believe you know, more people should take advantage of that. You know, live people are a rarity these days. Do you know it took me 10 freaking days to get an appointment with my urologist? Oh, my goodness. 10 days. Don't get me started. Anyway, um, I think it's too late for that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just such a great resource. But I do want to say something else apropos of what Brian um, Brian, when he described his life, and Lynn too, and, and so many others. Loneliness and alienation and feeling isolated. These things, there's been research on this, that sustained loneliness can cause as much damage as cigarettes. They have that impact on life expectancy. So the problem is alienation. And when you feel connected to others, to your species, you tend to do better in life. No matter what your body looks like or how you ambulate or whether you have a loved one with a disability. Feeling connected, feeling understood by others changes the quality of your life. You have a better sense of well-being. Alienation is poison, so it's really important to reach out. Or, you know, ask somebody else to reach out for you. But we can't do this alone. We can't do this alone. We can't do life alone. We can't. You know, we've got our brains are social brains. And if we're not connected, you know, we suffer. Bodies, brains, minds. Souls. And the one thing I've learned, too, is, is that you won't get the help unless you ask. You have to ask. Right. Those three words. Yes. Please Absolutely. help. Yeah, please help. I remember after, after 10 years with, with this disability, my wife left in the marriage. Um, and, you know, I did everything or, with her, or she did everything for me. No shopping, clothes. I didn't know how to function when I was driving. So I, I went to the mall just to try it. And I went to a shoe store. And the guy asked me if I wanted help. And I was too embarrassed. I said, no, I don't need help. And I bought a pair of shoes that I hated. And, you know, I never wore them. I gave them away. That's when I realized those three words, please help me. Things have gone pretty well since I used those words. Yeah, please help me with my coat. 
I go into a restaurant. Please help me take it off. They don't mind. They don't mind. Nobody minds. It's like I said, we've got social brains. And encountering someone's vulnerability opens up our hearts. It just does. What so I found, too, is if when you do ask for help, and if it is something as simple as, you know, please help me with my coat, I, I find that the person that you've asked, it's almost like they've been waiting a long time for you to ask them to help in any kind of way because they don't know how to. And they're so appreciative even though that you just asked to help with their coat. They're like, finally, you asked me to help you do something, and they feel so good. Yeah, yeah and, you know, you know my story, Julie, about that nurse. You know, it was right after my accident. All I wanted to do was die. This is maybe 10 days after my accident. I'm still in, in ICU. And all I wanted to do was close my eyes and not wake up again. And, and a nurse came up to me, and, and she asked if she could talk to me. And I said, of course. And she told me her tale of major losses in her life. And she said she could, didn't know if she could go on. And, you know, I listened, and I could literally feel what she was going through because that's what I was going through, you know, apropos of, of what we talked about with, with Brian. And, you know, at the end, you know, I, I recommended she see a therapist. I, I, and, and she thanked me and left. And I closed my eyes, and I said, I can live with this. I can live with quadriplegia because I have the ability to help someone else. By asking something of me, she changed my life. She might have saved my life. We don't know. We don't know what we're going to do for someone or for ourselves when we utter those three words. Please help me. And it takes courage. It takes courage. Uh, you know, Brian talked about pride. Um, it's really not pride. It's the opposite. It's shame. But maybe they're both the same thing. You know, I don't want to be embarrassed. It's the same thing. So, were you able to do it, Ms. Julie? Yes, but it took quite a few years. And then you kick yourself. You know, why didn't I do this quite a few years ago? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the kicking yourself that's kind of a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a feeling you are not the only one on the planet that does that. I think most do that. You know, I don't know how many people do not have a critical judge. You know, could beat them up. And I feel like people that people that are at, you know that join our calls every month um, are so close to doing that, and I'd love to hear from um, more of them um, that call in. I'm so glad to hear um, from Brian and Lynn today, and and Paul. Uh, the, no, Brian, both Brian's and, yeah. and Lynn today, and um, definitely encourage more people um, to speak out because every story helps another person. You're not kidding. You're not kidding. I spent um, many years in Al-Anon because I've got addiction in my family. And boy, has that, their stories, boy, did they help me you know, f find a way through this nightmare. Yeah, stories do help. So, for those of you who have been with us all this time, what is it you want to hear? What are your concerns and issues? There's a reason why you came on today. And I have to believe part of the reason is something you wanted to hear or say. So please do that for yourself. You know, we've been talking about self-compassion. You know, do that for yourself. Do that as an act of kindness. 
for the person you are. So, yes. Joy. They can um, definitely call back next month. We have a message for you in the community at ChristopherEve.org slash community. But start definitely start reaching out. Absolutely. I think that's just that's the I think that's our web web chat New Year's resolution. <laughs> to uh, really get people talking. Um I, w- I would also encourage you all, please chime in. If there's any issues you want to bring up, um, want to have a discussion, do it through the um, healing the heart and mind. Uh, discussion group on uh, on the Reeve uh, web page. Right, and I have this slide up now. It's uh, it's ChristopherReeve.org slash Dr. Dan, and that will take you right to your section of the community, Dr. Dan. Oh, good. Good. Where do you have that up? Um, on in the web. If you're uh, on the web portion of our um, web chat today. The slide that's up with your pretty picture. Oh, I see. I got the it. URL is ChristopherEve.org slash Dr. Dan. And what I love is that you do answer questions. You you are in there and you're answering questions. And um, you're speaking yeah. from the heart and mind. No, with everyone who chimes in, you know, not just being a therapist, but because I'm just that kind of human. You know, I just I just want to say, come on over. Let's sit down and have a cup of coffee. Let's talk. I want to hear more about your life. So I'm not I'm not inviting everybody to come to my house for coffee. But I don't know. Maybe over time you can all join me. I mean, yeah, this I, is Mason just said this is for, this is uh, Mason's first time here. So I hope it Mason it won't be your last so next time, please chime in. So Mason, uh, I wonder what you think, what you want. Tell us about what this experience has been like for you. Do you mind? Well, I'm so glad to hear that. You know, that somebody's there for the first time. Yeah, me too. Because I, I, what I find, it's usually not their last. And it is, it, you know, it, it is definitely worthwhile to call in as well. Um, so we, so um, depending on your level of disability, um, easier to speak in the phone as opposed to type or, you know, get your um, question out in the chat box. So uh, we both have the both options to do that. But if we don't catch Mason, Mason today, hopefully we will catch Mason next month. So, Joy. Yes. I never quite know what to talk about month <laughs> to month. But uh, next month, February, is Valentine's Day. And one of my favorite topics is love. What would you like to talk about next month? And to everybody listening, what would you like to talk about next month? I think more I think what I what I hear from a lot of people is um how to love themselves. So I think you have to love yourself first so others can love you as well. Well, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, all the professionals talk about that. Um, I've never quite mastered the loving myself part. Uh, I don't think uh, anybody's mastered it, so that's why I think we need to talk about it. <laughs> Get uh, tips. But it's, it's the... Um, the kindness mm-hmm. and compassion 
for this good person that we look at in the mirror. You know, we can we can talk about that um, next month. It's um, you know I'll tell you all about my lunch that I'm having next Wednesday. So Mason says, I'm a C5 complete injured a year ago on the 19th of this month. Oh, Mason, you're pretty new to this. Uh, I am also C5, C6 complete, but I was in, injured uh, 36 years ago. I would love to hear more about what it's like for you, um, more about your heart and mind around this issue, and uh, how we can be helpful, how I can be helpful. So um, please, please, you know, either chime in on uh, ChristopherReeve.org slash Dr. Dan, or uh, you know, tune in um, next month for both. So I'd love to chat with you. Uh, next month if possible. So thank you for listening in and uh, thanks for joining us. So Julie, we're coming near the end of our web chat. I, I want to thank all of you for uh, sticking with me after I had to uh, postponed last week. So thank you for that. Thank you for your flexibility. I, I really am grateful for that. Julie? Yes. Any thoughts you have as we come to the end? Again, just another encouragement for everyone to um, join us on the call next month as well as um, on their own time frame, chime in on the community and leave questions or answer other people's questions on the community. And let's make it a big, you know, a real community and um, and make it a big a, a discussion for next month. Be great. All right, Julie, and to everyone, I want to thank you all so much. Um, you know, this all happens because of you, and it's rich because of you. So thank you. Yes, thanks for joining us today. And this re this is being recorded, so you'll be able to um, you know, listen back if you'd like to. And you can do so, but it'll be up by the end of the week, and it'll be at ChristopherReeve.org slash webcast. And please look for Dr. Dan, Dr. Dan's uh, web chat at the beginning of next month in February. It will be on our home page. And thank you all for joining us today. And have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Dr. Dan. Take care, everybody. Have a great lunch with your friend, Dr. Dan. Uh, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.